And now we continue with our series, Homicide by the Numbers. The, the case is, is, is not being solved. It's keep piling up and piling up. On the TV, you can see that some of them clearly are not random. These are not random acts of violence. I think a lot of people wish they could turn back the time if they could, but they can't, so we have to deal with it from there. This record year of homicides in our city started with a young Somali Canadian, and he wasn't the only death that community had to deal with in 2011. Four of the 45 victims, almost 10%, have been Somali Edmontonians. The CBC's Adrian, Adrian Lamb has been looking at the numbers and what the police and community are doing about it. Good morning. Morning. Let's go back to that first killing almost a year ago now. Who was the victim? Well, his name was Mohammed Jama, the 23-year-old shot inside the lobby of the downtown Papyrus Restaurant and Lounge early New Year's Day. Now, if you recall, this shooting was in front of a crowd of witnesses, and there were rumblings of gang activity, but nobody saw anything. People tight-lipped with police, which sparked frustration from EPS members. And, and the tension leading to this focus on improving relations with that community and opening up those lines of communication. That's the, the first homicide of the year, but not the last. Uh, talk about the circumstances for the other killings. When it comes to the Somali community, there's been one in May, one in June, and another July. So back in May, a 20-year-old injured in a fight near Londonderry Mall. He died in hospital a couple of days later. Police ruled that killing was self-defense, so no charges will be laid there. Now, the one in June was a four 43-year-old father gunned down in a downtown alley. At the time, police said this may have been a case of mistaken identity. No charges so far there. Police still looking for witnesses in that killing. And finally, in July, a 25-year-old beaten to death. That man found unconscious outside an apartment building in northwest of the downtown. That case also unsolved so far, Rick. So, as we mentioned uh, in the introduction, roughly 10% of the 45 homicides of 2001 hit the Somali community. Give us a, a larger perspective on the size of that community here in Edmonton. Well, it's estimated 12,000 people. So, if you look at it that way, roughly a killing for every 3,000 people. Now, you compare that to the latest provincial wide averages, and we're looking at one homicide for every 50,000 people. So 17 times higher in the Edmonton Somali community versus the general population, hmm. which for comparison's sake, globally is higher than the homicide rate in the Dominican Republic, the Panama, or Brazil. And when you look at the numbers this way, you start to see why it's been such a highly publicized part of the homicide picture in 2011 and why there's a push on now to do something to address the violence. Talk about that push. Well, some programs in place now and police and the community agree the violence and the killings have to stop. But after that, there's a real divergence of opinion as to the amount of progress that's been made so far this year. Now, police say on a scale of 1 to 10, they've hit a 6 and are on their way to making real inroads. But one community leader we talked to says, as far as he's concerned, efforts so far worth a big, fat zero. And that's according to Mohammed Accord. He's with the Alberta Somali Community Centre here in Edmonton. Here's what he's seeing. In everywhere you see it, uh, the people are losing the faith, uh, the service with the police. And the police, it seems that they do not consider uh, the community as a sh stakeholder. That's the fundamental. We ask them to incorporate the community to the workforce. That means hire people who speak the language, not only the OS1 officers, but the other department. They, they haven't hired even one liaison. So what I'm saying to you, they're not serious. The level of services that we're getting is a minus negative side of it than Balai side. So do I have to keep complaining? We are a stakeholder. They don't see that. They are seeing that, that somebody who is foreign to the city and they, that somehow our problem will go away. We're not going away. We're going to stay here. And we are not better than anybody else, but, but we are not getting the service that we deserve it. And that uh, is called uh, a discrimination of low expectation because we haven't been treated as a Canadian citizen. 
That's Edmonton Somali community leader Muhammad Accord, and he says they're sick of the lip service the police pay to the community, and he says now they've made a formal request to the Edmonton Police Commission for a comprehensive review of the EPS's dealings with the Somali community. Accord says the lack of leadership from the city and the police has contributed to the problems, and the fact that we haven't had a Somali killing for the last five months, he says, is luck not progress. So uh, strong words from a a member of the Somali community. How have police responded? Well, they feel like they have made a difference. Brad Ward is the acting deputy chief. He offered up these examples that progress is being made. Uh, The Somali community uh, was able to come forward and assist us with developing a poster that would be able to reach out into the community in uh, the Somali language, asking for any assistance, any feedback. Uh, We've been able to work with uh, some young folks in the Somali community, working on mentoring and and guiding them towards a career in policing. Some of our officers have been engaged with uh, the Somali women, uh, informing them about how best to uh, uh, understand the Canadian system, really breaking down that barrier between the police officer you see in a uniform behind the uniform is still just a human being and so there's a relationship building going on there. We oftentimes ask to either participate in sporting events or to uh, uh, see if there's some way that we could support a sporting event and on one such occasion we were able to sponsor a weekend tournament and purchase some soccer balls for the youth that were playing there and I'm told, I haven't seen them, but I'm told that they had a little stamp on donated by the Edmonton Police Service. So it's a, you know, just something when the kids are out there kicking the ball around and having fun, that they can associate the police service with something, you know, that was good in their life. That's EPS's Brad Ward. And he says they've also hired a woman from the Somali community to develop more programs for the youth. He does agree more work needs to be done, and he's committed to do that work. Meantime, the Somali community says they're also working towards change. They've got their own tutoring and behavior programs now in Edmonton Junior Highs designed to catch kids before this level of violence grows. Adrian, thank you. You're welcome. The CBC's Adrian Lamb. If you'd like to hear any of the previous editions of our series, Homicide by the Numbers, go to our website, cbc.ca slash Edmonton.